Hello everyone. Thought I'd give a quick update of our new machine. We've had it about a week now. Uh, really only just got it running the last couple days. But just thought I'd give a bit of a walk around and let you guys know our initial thoughts. Uh, just because there's not a lot of information about these mills out there right now. I think that's about to change. I know there's lots of people who have bought them recently. So uh, yeah, this is a, they call it the Sill X7 combo uh, when you've got the enclosure and all that with it. So power wise in Canada, we mostly in residential areas have, we call it 220, but it's 240 volt. So we've got this 10 horsepower rotophase that takes it to three phase 240 volt. And then we got this transformer from Sill, which is supposed to go to about 380, but we're, we're quite high. We're at about 430 volts, which is fine for all of the machine except for the ATC motor and the coolant pump. So we're gonna look more into that and it may reduce the life of those motors or it may not, but we're probably gonna look into it. So we'll fire up the rotophase. As you can see, it's not really that loud. So we put a contactor between the rotophase and the transformer because you can't have any loads during startup. Fire that up. You'll hear the mill now has power. So this is the Siemens 808D Advanced. We'll start it. You can get it with Mach 3, AdTech, Siemens Basic, Siemens Advanced, and I think GSK now, I think it is. Some of the people have ordered them with recently. I'm pretty happy with our decision so far with the, with the Advanced system. Ordered it with the 12 tool uh, automatic tool changer. We also got this Pioneer TTC 200 uh, tool setter. Kind of looks like uh, you know, a Renishaw knockoff, basically. It's got a 10,000 RPM BT30 spindle. There's these three coolant lines on the head, but I got them to modify it. So these two are coolant, but this one now is air blast. I got them to add uh, air piping to the head and also a solenoid to control with the controller. I also got them to add this coolant uh, wash down hose. The pump's a little weak for it, but it still does an okay job. Uh, kind of hosing things down with coolant. It's nice to wash the enclosure out with it. And um, this work light is standard, and I got them to add this one. And so I'll turn those on in a minute. So, oh, it's ready now. So, anyway, yeah, they work alright. I don't think it's too dark in here at all. Down below the machine or the, is the coolant uh, tank. So there's one big drawer here that holds all the coolant and it's got a chip divider in it and then there's also this guy here uh, which is like a your chip tray I guess uh, it seems to do a reasonable job I'm gonna try some of that McMaster filter cloth though uh, the enclosure the quality of it very happy with it everything fits very nicely the quality seems very high same with the casting everything fits and works very nicely Around the back here is the uh, electronics cabinet, so we'll open it up. The one thing I would have suggested is to have this have a, a lock and key like the transformer does up there. It's probably really hard for you to see, but just so people don't inadvertently open it, there's, in our case, there's 430 volts here, which according to my electrician is electrician killing power. So yeah, that's the one thing. A guy could just keep the keep the key up top but at least it'll you know keep people from opening it that shouldn't so here's the advanced drivers wiring is very nice and tidy uh, we checked every single screw in here there wasn't anything loose so yeah the assembly quality seems to be quite good the only issue we had when we got it was uh, the Z-axis encoder was disconnected, so we got an alarm. It was pretty easy to get to the bottom of it, but uh, I think they were just tidying up the wire and left it disconnected. Just because of how it was tie wrapped, uh, you, could, you couldn't barely connect it the way it was tie wrapped, so not a big deal. Down here is the air, condition, air connection, sorry. It's 
unfiltered air. Here's the pressure switch for the controller. So if you're ordering the machine, start searching for this fitting. So it's a VSP T fitting. So it's the tapered British standard pipe thread. We used a, we had one, luckily, a six mil, which this quarter inch line fit into. And then we got a quarter inch push to connect on the wall. So luckily we didn't have to order anything. And yeah, we got extra cable and air and ether ethernet cable excuse me uh, in case we want to move the machine around a little bit this is the uh, y-axis servo a bunch of air valves automatic oiler if you're getting the machine it's got big giant red cast iron feet and you'll notice they've got a machined edge and i thought those should have been pointed in towards the castings but at least in this corner that it's supposed to provide clearance for the sheet metal so as you can see, uh, I can't line that up. I've leveled it with a machinist level, so I'm not too interested in fixing that right now. But maybe that'll help someone. Yeah, door on this side too, which has been pretty convenient. So, uh, I'll do a quick tool change, just to show how that works. So you just go into Jog, and then TSM. We're going to pick, right now it's on tool 3, we'll just tell it to go to tool 2. And we're only at about 50% feed rate. And then you just hit cycle start. And now if we want to measure that tool, we can use the Pioneer tool setter. So we do that by calling a, a routine in Machine Data Automatic. Unfortunately, the, it's not working with the uh, tool measuring screens from Siemens, but we are kind of looking into seeing if that can work. Richard Talbot is uh, pretty knowledgeable about this kind of stuff, and he's trying to, trying to get it figured out. So uh, we'll go into Machine Data Automatic. This is the automatic routine, the L960 came with them because we ordered it with the probe. So R7 equals 1, that's length only. R1 is the tool number, so tool 2. And R3 is the diameter. So that will affect whether or not the tool rotates and if it runs off center. So for all of uh, the small tools, I just leave it set to 3.175, which is 3 eighths. Or, yeah, I think it's 3 eighths. Uh, sorry, an eighth, I mean. And uh, so we'll just run it, like once this is set properly. You just hit cycle start and it'll go. This is 50% feed rate by the way. And what I should have done is check the offset table before we started. So it would have just updated tool 2 and uh, what I can tell you is it said 78.708 because I did just do this video but I was interrupted so I'm redoing it. Uh, so usually the worst I've seen it uh, repeat to on the same day is 0 .002 and on different days is 0 .004 but normally it's 0 .002 or better repeatability. Uh, in fact, you know what, let's just run it again. So, 78, 708, I'll go back to MDA, and we'll just run it again. So that was 78, 708, right? Just checking it, 78, 708. So, here we go. see what it did. It's going to make a liar out of me. 78708. So that's 0 .000 repeatability. So the only time I've really seen a big variance is if you're doing it one day to the next. And I wouldn't be surprised if things like the temperature in the shop 
and everything I have to do with it because we are getting some wide temperature sprint or temperature swings. It goes down to it's about 10 at night and it's going up to about 33 in the day here, which is unusual for us. So there you go, that's how that works. Uh, if you have ordered the machine, one thing to save you some fr frustration, in order to use the drawbar, you have to activate K11 on the controller, otherwise it won't work. And when this is activated, the spindle won't work. So you gotta deactivate it when you wanna turn the spindle on. So that, those two things might save you a bit of messing around. And yeah, I think, I mean, I can't think of uh, any other issues that we've had. We thought, I thought coolant was getting into somewhere under the table that it shouldn't, but it turns out that I think that's totally normal. I've had zero leaks on this machine, which I thought was pretty incredible. Like not a single drip anywhere. And like I said, the only thing I wish was a little different was I wish it did have a bit more coolant pressure. But I'm, you know, I'm maybe going to look into that and maybe look into upgrading the coolant pump. And yeah, for the machine itself, I think that's it. The uh, 808 Advanced, one of the things it has over the basic is Ethernet. So we ran an Ethernet cable all the way over to the computer, but couldn't get Windows 10 to cooperate. So one of my friends got me to set up a Raspberry Pi as basically a server so we can load all our tool paths onto it and then the mill can grab it because this ethernet cable is connected to the mill and that has the advantage of while they're all stored on here i can come out and load them into the controller without needing to start the shop computer if i don't have to i mean it's not a really major advantage but it's something so there's that and i think uh again richard talbot is i think going to be uh experimenting more with his uh, Ethernet connection, so maybe he'll have more luck than I did, but I kind of like the Raspberry Pi idea myself. Um, yeah, so I think that's it for machine stuff. I don't know what else you guys might have wanted to see, but hopefully that gives you a bit of an idea. Uh, for tools, I did order the machine with some tools from Sill. Uh, I got these ER ER collet holders. They appear to be very high quality. I think I spec 0.005 millimeters run out. Uh, so I, I ended up getting these, which are pretty nice. I see they're UM, which, you know, to me might mean microns. You can tell they're balanced. It doesn't tell you to what spec or anything, but so far they seem very nice. So that was the 32. And this is, uh, I got 20s and 16. This is the 16. Again, balance marks, and they are all in different locations. I also got some drill holders. Uh, so here's one of them. These are the big ones. And here's the smaller ones. For, I got some, uh, some other tools off AliExpress. There's a store that I really like dealing with on there. So I got these floating tap holders with quick change tap collets. These are G3 tap collets. So I got some ISO holders and some DIN 371s. So I'm excited to try that out. But the more I think about <coughs> excuse me, float tapping, the more I think that rigid tapping is uh, perhaps a lot easier. So I'm going to experiment with that a little bit today. From AliExpress I also got these DC collet holders which look very nice. So I'm excited to try those out. I got a hammer or hammer, or however you pronounce it, and I'm just holding it in a ER32 collet holder. I had a heck of a time adjusting this. Uh, these screws were so hard to adjust. I don't know how I didn't break my uh, Allen key, but I ended up finally getting it adjusted. Apparently, there's an well, there is an adjustment under here. You take the tip out. There's an Allen key adjustment but I wasn't able to adjust that. I was going to strip it out for sure. Apparently, if you can loosen that, it loosens the pressure required on here. This does seem to be a somewhat common issue. People have talked about it, but mine was almost almost unadjustable. I think I got it down to two tenths and I stopped. So anyway, pretty happy with it. Maybe I'll do another video of how I got this set up with the uh, tool setter. It was a little bit challenging in my mind anyway. I'm not a 
I'm not an actual machinist, so some of that stuff was a bit of a learning curve, but yeah, it was nice. I'm, I come from the, you know, Tormac TTS world, so it was a little bit, a little bit more to think about with these. These are not repeatable height. I incorrectly made the assumption that this face actually contacted the spindle nose so that your height was from one tool holder to the next would be the same at this location which obviously you know the second I thought about it I realized that it has to do with the fit of this taper so there is a definite change from one one tool to the next with the gap between here and the spindle nose anyway I've been really happy with that with the hamer timer whatever and yeah, that's all I can really think about. I'm gonna try and work on this fixture plate today. I gotta cut this box out to be able to get around the tool probe because I don't want to move it because I don't really know how to set it up again. This other box represents the machine travel. So it's decent for what I need it to be. Uh, obviously bigger would be better, but uh, for me, that's, that's what I've got. And I got a bunch of stock uh, to use to try and cut the things I need to cut. Also got a tool locker, they call it a tool locker, from uh, from Sill with the machine. And I got this, I, I think I ordered this one off that same store on AliExpress actually. So that's all I can really think of for now, for an update. Hopefully that's useful to you guys. And uh, I do post a lot of stuff with the machine on Instagram, our Instagram's at BTI underscore LTD. So usually I'll fire off videos and pictures of doing stuff on here to that. So if you kind of want to follow it along, that's probably the best place to do it. I'm probably going to, you know, as long as these appear useful to, to people, I'll probably do more videos like this. And yeah, I think that's about it. Uh, so yeah, so far happy and yeah, I'll be happy to share more more of our journey with this thing as we as we get going actually making production parts oh i guess that's the other thing uh sorry i'm just random here but i uh um there is the part i cut on this already but i don't know where it ended up which is interesting hmm well maybe we'll just have to uh have to uh look at that a different time oh here it is so this, it's all got dried up coolant on it now, but, you know, turn the screen on. So this was my first first cut with the machine. So yeah, I mean, I'm pretty happy with the way it turned out. I made no efforts whatsoever to uh, optimize the finish or even dimensions or anything. I just wanted it to run, I wanted to see it work. So that was the first thing I did. Yeah, all right. Well, that's about it for now. So until uh, my next video, I'll talk to you guys later.